Welcome to First Chapter Fridays. I am Ariana from the Covington Branch Library. This summer, each Friday, we will be featuring the first chapter from some of our favorite Louisiana Young Reader's Choice Award nominees. The Louisiana Young Reader's Choice Award is a program that allows you to vote on which of the nominees deserves the award. If you want to know more about the, long, the Louisiana Young Reader's Choice Award, please visit our library website at stamanylibrary.org. Today, we will be reading Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. Then there's the cover. The first chapter is titled, Rabbits are Crepuscular, Most Active at Dawn and Dusk. A rabbit, I heard Dad say to the phone, is he hurt? Mom sighed at the bowl of mashed potatoes in her hands like in her hands. She likes it when all four of us can eat supper together, but when a main gang warden gets a call, he has to go. Even if it's summertime, and tomorrow is the biggest day of my life. How long has the rabbit been there? Dad asked. Mom had made all my favorite foods. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, corn on the cob, and blueberry pie for dessert. For dessert. <laughs> but I was too excited to eat very much. My older brother Owen leaned toward me. Who's the head? Excited or scared? I grinned. When we were little, whenever we had mixed feelings about something, Owen and I'd pretend those feelings were running in a race. We hadn't done it in a long time, though. Excited is way ahead, but scared is coming on strong, I said. Mom passed me the bowl of mashed potatoes. I'm sure most kids feel that way on the night before school starts. I nodded, though we both knew I wasn't most kids. Most kids went to school for the first time in preschool, or kindergarten, or maybe first grade. Not many started in fifth. In fact, I was pretty sure I'd be the only fifth grader at Lakeview Elementary School who'd never gone off to school before. It wasn't that I hadn't done school work. I'd done plenty. My lessons had been at the kitchen table, though. Silent science experiments were done in the bathroom or on the front porch in case they exploded or leaked. I read books on my bed or on the couch or even floating in a kayak on the lake in front of our house. Being homeschooled had many good parts, but the best part had always been Owen. We made up games and shared secret jokes. We told each other stories and collected rocks together. When Owen did something, he'd ask me if I wanted to do it too. Being four years apart didn't matter until last year. Owen told mom and dad he wanted to see what public school was like, so he went to high school and was gone all day. He made new friends, then he added after-school things like theater and playing right field on the baseball team. What he subtracted was me. Mom said it sometimes happens as brothers and sisters get older, but I didn't think it happened to us. Maybe Excited has marbles in her pocket, Owen said, and she drops them on the track so scared we'll slip on them. I imagined Excited pulling a whole handful of marbles out of her pocket and then dropping them one by one. Okay. Give me your address, I heard Dad say. Don't touch me. I'll be right over. As he put his phone in his pocket, Mom said, Let me fix you a plate to take with you, Gabe. Thanks, but just put it in the fridge, Dad said, pulling on his green warden, warden jacket. I'll warm it up when I get back. This shouldn't take too long. A woman found a wild rabbit stuck between two wooden pickets in her fence. Guess he tried to jump through and only made it halfway. I hope I don't have to take the fence apart. The lady is already fuming about being late for something. Can I come? I asked. But, Emma, I made all your favorite things, Mom said, and you haven't eaten more than a few bites. Thank you, Mom. I love it all, but my stomach's too jumpy to eat. I thought about school all summer, but now the big day was tomorrow. Little worries were creeping in. What if the other kids knew things that I didn't? What if everyone already had their own friends and didn't want more? Scared jump right over those marbles. I could pass you tools, I called to Dad, and the lady will probably be nicer with the kid there. He paused, his hand on the doorknob, and glanced back at Mom. She sighed. All right, we'll save the pie for later. Don't keep her out late, though, Gabe. She has to be up early. I bolted from my seat so fast that our golden retrievers, Molly and Maggie, started barking like there was an emergency. Aren't you coming? I asked Owen. He shook his head. I have to call Jordan. I'm hoping to convince him to try out for soccer with me. Soccer? When did he decide that? 
You can tell me all about it when you get home, Owen said. I hope we can just wiggle the rabbit free, Dad said, as I caught him on the front porch. But let's bring something to put him in just in case he's injured. I've got a big plastic bin in the barn and that should hold him till we get him to the rehab center. A bunny in a box, I said. Dad smiled. Rabbit wrangler, that's my job. Animals are my favorite part of Dad's jobs. If the rehabilitation center is already closed for the night, Dad might even bring an injured or orphaned animal home with him. Once I came downstairs to breakfast and found a fox kit sleeping in a box by the wood stove. Another morning, Mom screamed when she went to put water in the coffee pot, and there was a turtle with a cracked shell in the plastic tub in our kitchen sink. A beaver with a bad foot even slept in the cage in our barn one evening. One evening. Owen says we run a wildlife bed and breakfast. Our dogs Miley, Molly and Maggie are used to it. They just give the newcomer a quick sniff and then accept it as belonging. Sometimes Dad even lets me come with him to release an animal back into the wild. As soon as he opens the cage door or the box flaps, a look flashes into that animal's eyes that I can't explain, but it knows it's free. Then there's a rush of wings reaching for the sky, or paws racing for the woods, and it's gone. The whole thing is over in seconds, but it's the best moment ever. The worst, the worst part of Dad's job is when he catches someone breaking a hunting law. They might have to pay a fine or even go to jail. Sometimes that conversation happens way out in the woods with no one else around, and the hunter is holding a gun. Dad would never take me on a call like that, though. Only on quick, simple animal rescues. Like freeing a stuck rabbit from a picket fence and watching him hop away if he's okay, or helping him out if he isn't. I should have known better, though. Rabbits are tricksters. When I was little, I always begged my grandfather to tell me a story about Monsieur Lapin, Mr. Rabbit. It happened once. Prepare would start, and it was like the world slowed down to listen. I'd hang on his every word until Monsieur Lapin had cheated and sneaked his way through every near miss and danger. Little, smart, fast as the wind on a mountaintop, and full of surprises. Anything is possible with rabbits. Thank you for joining us for First Chapter Friday. Please join us next week for another exciting first chapter. If you would like to read more of this book, visit your local branch library or place a hold on our website. And the book, once again, is Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. See you next week.